Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. Jumping from 2D to 3D, what a yippity yahoo time that sure was. Get in or get out, sucker. Let's just get it out of the way. Controller bad. This is where you like the video and subscribe because I'm just that relatable. And yes, this three-prong setup is a little weird, but it's not really that bad because every game has used two of the three sides, but why have the controller molded this way to begin with? The joystick actually is pretty bad. It breaks really easily, slips out of your thumb due to a lack of a good grip, and is overall just garbage. I get it's one of the first 3D consoles, but it's aged horribly. There is technically the Hori Pad, which fixes most of the original controller issues, but it only came out in Japan, so it's pretty spendy. It's definitely better than the N64 Power Glove, and yes, Yes, this is a real controller. Also, yes, it's somehow worse than the NES's Power Glove. If you want to play Donkey Kong 64 or Majora's Mask, you have to have the expansion pack. Add-ons are dumb. Even stranger is Donkey Kong 64 doesn't really need the expansion pack. There was a weird bug that could only be fixed by the pack, so it's required for that reason alone. What's up with the cartridges not having end labels? Like, why did I have to go on Etsy to buy custom ones for all my games? I like the idea of the Rumble Pack, but this is another thing that's aged horribly. The shaking is way too strong and is just kind of annoying. I never use mine. Alright, get ready for quick story time with Bandy fellas, because I'm about to tell you how modern gaming began. So as I'm sure you know, Nintendo and Sony were supposed to team up and make a console together, but Nintendo had issues with Sony having too much ownership. Basically, Sony had control of the Super Disc format, including Nintendo software, as well as control over licensing music and movies. Nintendo didn't like this, and decided to work with Philips instead. At the time, Sony and Philips were massive rivals, so Nintendo secretly made a better deal with Philips in order to gain control back to their software and to basically f over Sony in quotations. Because of that, the PlayStation now exists and so does modern gaming. So uh, you can thank Nintendo for beginning the era of microtransactions, loot boxes, and day one DLC. Good job, Nintendo. Also, the N64 only sold 32 million units while the PlayStation sold 102 million. But what did Nintendo get out of their deal with Philips? The CDI, Hotel Mario, Zelda The Wand of Gamelon, Link the Faces of Evil, and Zelda's Adventure. You couldn't ask for more of a f up, honestly. There's only 296 North American games, which might sound like a lot, but the average console has way more than that. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda wish they just stuck with Nintendo Ultra 64. There was a reason they couldn't, but that name sounds way cooler, and the branding itself was much sleeker and stylish. While I like the aesthetic of cartridges and the faster load times, CDs were the way to go because they could hold way more data, they costed less to produce, and were able to create a higher quality image. Because of that, Nintendo had very little third-party support, which meant a lot of the big games at the time wouldn't work on the N64. And because the N64 launch was delayed by a couple years, the PlayStation had all the time in the world to develop a fan base, which made it way more likely for third parties to make games with them. Nintendo had a lot of software droughts, which affected its overall sales. Hmm, where have I heard this before? Oh, let me think. Let's see, uh, the Wii, the Wii U, the Switch... Guess how many launch games this console had? Two of them! I hope you like Mario, because, uh, there was literally nothing else to play. That's probably why the N64 never came with a pack-in game, because there were only two games available anyway. The N64 microphone is absolute trash. It just doesn't work. I mean, maybe it did when it first launched, but nowadays, don't even bother with it. I really miss the days when Nintendo released translucent colored consoles. That's one thing about the N64 that we'll probably never see again because everything has to be simple and clean nowadays. There's no time for fun. Fun not allowed. Super Mario 64, Dr. Mario 64, Mario Kart 64, Excitebike 64, Mega Man 64, Maya Ham Soccer 64, Ogre Battle 64, Kirby 64, Starcraft 64, Bomberman 64, Ridge Racer 64, Asteroids Hyper 64, Carmageddon 64, Nuclear Strike 64, Donkey Kong 64, Namco Nizam 64, Destruction Derby 64, Road Rash 64, Bass Hunter 64, Must Truck Madness 64, Shadowgate 64, Micro Machine 64, Virtual Pool 64, Golden Nugget 64, White about 64, GT 64, Gex 64, Virtual Chess 64, Quest 64, Forsaken 64, Fighting Force 64, Robotron 64, Duke Nukem 64, Madden Football 64, F1 Pole Position 64, International Superstar Soccer 64, Star Fox 64, Doom 64, FIFA Soccer 64, Wave Race 64, Piloting 64, Harvest Moon 64, holy sh**, I think these games are for the Nintendo 64, oh my god! By the way, Mega Man 64 is just Mega Man Legends. Why did they change the name and make everyone really confused? I remember watching the Mario 64 Got Melt commercial when I was a kid. That makes me feel old as hell. Thanks a lot, Reality. 
get in or get out is a slogan lost in time. It's trying to be aggressive like the Sega Genesis was, but nobody cared. Like, I didn't even know this was the slogan until I was much older. Mario gets arrested in the Mario Party commercial. I knew he was a troublemaker all along. I just figured out why Mario is a chonky boy, and that's because he had a collaboration with Taco Bell. It's all adding up. Let's watch the first 15 seconds of this commercial. It's all in the head, the head move. In the body, the body. Wait there. So this is a process. Guide with your arm. Not bad. Okay, good. You saw it. You're really confused. Now what I need you to do is take a wild guess at what this game is promoting. I'll give you a second. Ponder your choice. Think about it. Think about it. All right. If you guessed Yoshi's story, then you would be correct. Congratulations. And we haven't even gotten started on the 64 disk drive. This was Nintendo's answer to adding more storage to their games. And it never released outside of Japan. So, uh, that's how well that one went. It's also kind of ironic going from cartridges to using what's essentially a floppy disk. Considering storage technology at its most primitive form is a floppy disk. What's worse, the games themselves only held 64 megabytes of storage, while the PlayStation discs were holding over 600 megabytes. Why did they even bother when the upgrade is so minimal? There's only 10 games for the system, and RanNet doesn't work at all anymore. So you know what we gotta do? Play them all, because I will never have a reason to play these again ever in my entire life. Mario Artist Paint Studio, Mario Artist Communication Kit, Mario Artist Polygon Studio, Mario Artist Town Studio. Why are there four of these games? So Paint Studio's menu screen has transitioned to still images of flowers, Venusaur, and Squirtle. What in the hell am I getting myself into? The marker squeaking is actually ear grating. I like how the smooth effect is literally just adding gauge and blur. I use this all the time, I know what it looks like. I know how to make this picture funnier. Just add the zigzag effect. Comedy 100, I did it, Gen Z. Okay, but honestly, these special effects remind me of all the goofy crap that used to be in Windows Movie Maker back in the early 2000s. It's strangely nostalgic, and I'm only just realizing how awful it was. You can only use undo one time. That's pretty lame. Why would anyone want a virtual coloring book back in the day when an actual coloring book would have been way more satisfying and fun? So you can add random pictures of Mario 64 renders. While I'm secretly geeking out inside, this is extremely pointless. Nintendo? That's not a spiny shell. That's a green shell. And this is not a spiky shell. It's a blue or spiny shell. Now, I should mention I'm playing an English translated version, so that could just be wrong and it's correct in the original Japanese version. As far as I can tell, you can't resize any of these images. You can flip and rotate them, but scaling up and down, oh, that's too hard. Oh my god, I have never seen this Mario Kart 64 render before. Why is this the most bizarre and mind-boggling game I've ever played? Holy sh**. An N64 Fire Flower render. And it looks terrible. Thank God no one's seen this before. I can't get over the pictures that you can add in this game. I mean, there's stuff from Wave Race 64 and even like Banjo-Kazooie. This game is so freaking weird. They even included all 151 original Pokemon plus a few bonus pictures. Like, why is this even called a Mario Artist game? It should have just been called Nintendo Artist. Well, this isn't terrifying at all. Okay, guys, can we just like take a minute and talk about the noses on this page? Going from top left to bottom right, we've got this super thin scrawny one that almost looks angry. Then there's this one with some freckles, but it just looks like a raindrop. Then we've got this one with hair on the outside. We've got one with a lot of hair on the inside, one with snot that's wrapping around the nose, and one that's blowing out air, and one with snot coming out of both nostrils, one that's bruised up and has a lot of blackheads, and then finally, for our final freaking finale, one that can speak in Japanese. I Nothing reminds me more of Mario than a bunch of dudes rollerblading. Is my 64DD using a real hammer to save this picture? Like, I'm not gonna lie, this game is super charming for just how over the top it is. How do you like my beautiful animation? I spent a whole two minutes on it. There's even this weird 3D mode where you can edit the textures and stuff. Frankly, this is some pretty cool technology for the time, but I just can't imagine anybody that would want to spend time with this kind of stuff. You can even run around in the 3D mode, which is cool, but the camera is atrocious. Hey look, it's the real Turok 4! Yes, I get it now. That makes sense. So I think the point of Mario Artist Polygon Studio is to learn how to edit 3D models. It's an interesting idea, but it's just so clunky to navigate. This is legitimately nightmare fuel.
Yes, I really understand what's going on now. Nobody told me that WarioWare began from this game. I wish I knew that a long time ago. Ah, yes, time to add female inside Spear. That's exactly what I wanted. What? The f I genuinely have no words for what is happening. Like, I must be missing the context because I just don't get it. Something is written on this bread. Oh great, now the bread is talking to me. For 50 years, we have been placing these toasters in this world. We bake the bread you can trust. Well, I don't trust you. So if you don't move on the menu, all the pieces start to just float and the music gets really creepy. It's time to move on, I'm getting really scared. Ah, so this is where Mies originated, for better or for worse. I have to say, Town Studio isn't nearly as weird as the other two, but this still has absolutely nothing to do with Mario. You can wear a mask, how appropriate. What are you even waiting for? I promise, there's no toilet behind the door, I'm telling you. There's also this weird movie studio section, where you can very heavily edit all the scenes, the characters in them, the lighting. I mean, it's shockingly in-depth for what it is. This is such a weird piece of history that clearly had a lot of effort put into it, but again, nobody knows this exists. So Mario Artist Communication Studio doesn't really work because I don't have it translated in English, and it wasn't really a game anyway. It allowed players to connect to the RanNet service and upload the things they made. So it's an interesting piece of software that's completely useless now. Speaking of RanNet, this disc can't be used anymore either. You would use a modem, mouse, and keyboard and could access the internet with it. This is just the Roblox guy, but very big. So basically, I'm playing as a god and I'm supposed to help these villagers, but man is it slow and boring. It takes forever to get anywhere, and all you do is pick up stuff and throw it. The full name of this game is Doshin the Giant Liberation Front Chibiko Chico Collection. Rolls right off the tongue. This game is obnoxious to play because you have to swap the disc with the first game since building monuments is required to make progress in this game. Who thought this was a good idea? I'm gonna say it, this game is worse than Superman 64 and I'm glad I can't read Japanese to fully experience it. The Zaymon DD. Every failed console has to have a space shooter because it's just a requirement. This game is honestly not that bad, it's just weird that it had to be played on the 64 disc drive. It looks like it would have worked on the regular N64. This is SimCity 64. It's a typical Sims game, but I can't read any of it. And that's too bad because it actually looks kind of fun and I'm vibing with the overworld music too. Maybe someday there'll be an English version to try it. This intro sounds like the credits for a Christmas Hallmark film. Either this is the worst golf game of all time, or I just don't get it. You have to swing the ball by, I think, pushing left on the joystick, and then it just kind of does it automatically and misses most of the time? Why isn't it just normal controls? A new record long shot. Thank you for celebrating two feet, I guess. How did F-Zero get a track editor before Mario Kart did? <gasps> Wait a minute. The extra tracks are kind of cool, but it's nothing special or really worth playing. What? You thought you were getting out of this video without Mario 64? Well, the 1996 Space World demo got out, so of course I'm gonna play it. The castle music sounds a little different. It's honestly a lot creepier with the longer notes. It's not just that, though. There are a lot of weird sounds that sound different. Apparently, this is what the PAL version of Mario 64 sounded like, but it's hard to say. So according to a wiki page I read, when you enter the Wiggler fight, it supposedly crashes the game. But I have a special version that's been converted to be played on an actual N64, so I guess that fixed the glitch? Phew, that was a lot more N64 than I was expecting to play. Now, this console, definitely a little weird looking at it nowadays, but it's still one of my favorites. There's a reason I have almost all the games, and that's because the few games that are good are really, really good games and still hold up today. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get RanNet working on here. I'm gonna hack into it. I'm a hacker man. Thanks for watching.